How's it going, Pitching Factory? My name is Coach Justin Sherman. My company is Just In Time Baseball. Um, and I'm very flattered to be giving a psyched up story. Um, I was asked by Coach Kiki. I'm flattered. It's awesome. Um, anytime I can give back to the baseball softball community and, and help as many students as I can, uh, I'm always willing to help, uh, especially a coach like Kiki. Um, so just a brief little summary on who I am. Uh, I'm from Westchester, New York, very affluent area. Uh, a lot of great travel baseball, a lot of great coaches. Uh, there's also probably not some great travel programs, just like anywhere else in the country. Um, but bottom line, overall, it's very competitive, um, big school districts. I mean, my high school, I went to a place called New Rochelle High School. I had about a thousand people in my graduating class alone and about 3,800 kids, students in the entire school. So, I mean, it's a lot of kids. So just to put that in perspective, um, it was competitive from the very get-go. It was competitive. So my story is I played backtracking, or actually fast-forwarding. I am now a coach in Westchester, New York. I have a company called Just In Time Baseball. Um, and I train a lot of kids from ages as young as five to 12 years old. And I would say my mission statement really geared towards youth development, excuse me, over the last year and a half. Of course, I train high school athletes, but um, my core is really youth development. So the bottom line is I was a college baseball player I coached at Purchase College. I was the captain. It's a nice little school here in Westchester, New York. Ironically, I was close to home. Um, I played two years at a community college prior. I was a pretty solid baseball player. Led the conference in RBIs. Led the conference in doubles. I mean, I was a good solid ball player. But with all that being said, you know, I see here we're talking about different questions about the mental side. And one of the questions is, have your statistics ever gotten in the way of your playing ability and your just overall mindset. And that really hit home to me when I read this question. So let's paint a picture. I was a freshman baseball player of solid, if best. Uh, I didn't really work as hard as I should have. Uh, I just loved the game. I love, you know, n no fault of anybody, but I loved the game, but I didn't really work that hard. Um, just I, I kind of got by so I actually was fortunate enough I, I got I had a great coach on the freshman baseball team I played rec ball wasn't really a great ball player got cut from a lot of travel teams uh, and that's really why fast forwarding why I got into coaching but I got I got to the platform of trying out for my junior varsity baseball team made the first made the first round made the second round and on the third round, I was literally, you know, all our names were on the list. My name was not on the list. Okay, so I got cut. I was pretty much, in my opinion, the last person to be cut. So I didn't make my junior varsity baseball team. And there's a reason why I'm saying all this stuff. I didn't make my junior varsity baseball team. Uh, I actually went up to the junior varsity baseball coach in the parking lot the following day. Um, and he thought I was going to like punch him in the face or something. But I went up to him and I said, coach, I mean, what are some things I could do to get better? So he told me my hitting, my pitching, my fielding, whatever. I mean, all this stuff. The bottom line is I, in hindsight, I probably shouldn't have made the JV team. I wasn't good enough. So I worked 10 times harder, worked my tail off and ended up making the varsity team. So as a 10th grader, you really, if you don't play JV, it's real, almost like kind of the end of the road a lot for most people, 95% of people. But I decided to try out for the varsity, work my tail off, have great coaches along the way, and I ended up making it. Uh, still average to, to above average, maybe, as a high school baseball player, didn't get, didn't get any scholarships, nothing. Played two years at JUCO, had a good career, worked extra, extra hard. I 10 x my work ethic. And, you know, I, I just wanted more. I wanted more. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that's what, that's what it's about. It's about the pursuit. 
uh, and that's something I'll go into. But I'm painting you this picture because one of the questions here as I'm looking at this question sheet is, did you ever get wrapped up in your statistics? And the answer is yes. And it is the devil of a baseball softball player. It really is. I mean, I get questions from uh, coaches and parents all the time about how do I get more, how do I have my son or daughter to get more hits? And I really think that is the devil. Okay, I think that is really not the approach for what coaches and what parents should be looking at. I was guilty of getting too wrapped up in statistics when I had no right to. I told you my backstory because I didn't even make my junior varsity baseball team four years ago. Why should I be worrying about how many hits I have when a hit is not even in my control? So my answer here to this question is, did I get wrapped up in statistics? Yes. Uh, and I regret it every day. I regret it. I mean, I love a lot of things that I did in my baseball career. I'm so thankful for the coaches. I'm so thankful for the relationships I built. Uh, the relationships I built as a young ball player, even in middle school, I'm still best friends with the coaches today. But, you know, the one regret I have is I worry too much about statistics. And I don't want you guys to worry about statistics because if you see what my journey is, my journey is not to say, oh, I made it to the major leagues. My journey is to kind of, sometimes you gotta look back and look behind you and see like, wow, I came a long way. And you could give yourself a pat on the back a little bit. It doesn't mean that you're content. It doesn't mean that you're complacent. You don't wanna get complacent. But it's okay to recognize where you've been and where you're gonna go and I think it, the statistics really damper your ability. Okay, I worry so much about getting hits. I would go to my phone in between a double header and check my batting average. If I got one hit here, if I got four hits in the next 10 games, I would bat this. And if I didn't do that, it was, I regret that. That's the only thing I regret in my baseball career. It is the number one thing I regret is stat hunting. Okay, I'm probably beating myself up a little bit, but. Um, it is something that I regret and I don't like using the word regret because you learn from everything and this is why I'm coaching because I want to bring that message to students to focus on the process and be a great teammate. I don't remember really what I even hit. I mean, yeah, I rattle off the doubles and the RBIs, but I'm not the most proud of that. I'm the most proud of the relationships I built, what I've learned from great coaches. Um, you know, the, the team aspect, the chemistry, that's what I remember, okay? And I'm not saying statistics are not important. I'm not saying don't go chase your dream. I'm not saying don't go hit a ton to your hands rip because that's the kind of hitter I was and that's the kind of coach I try to be to my players is I, I try to be a grinder. I'm up early, I'm staying late, I'm learning, I'm soaking up knowledge, I'm reading, uh, I'm, I'm going to kids games. So I try to do the best for my baseball program but you have to understand that you gotta enjoy the process because it'll ultimately make you a better leader it'll make you a better player vice versa whatever by enjoying the process and that is my biggest regret and, and I'll tell you like I came a long way from making the varsity baseball team which I to me I'm very proud of to this day and I don't excuse me I don't say that to be a bragger I say that to inspire young athletes that just because you get cut from a team doesn't mean if you don't work harder and get to the right mentors and, and talk to good people that anything is possible. But I'll tell you, the one thing I do kind of regret, which I hate using that word, is chasing the statistics. And the best advice I would have is try to enjoy your teammates, enjoy the process. Obviously, what's going on with this pandemic, I, I, I get text messages all the time from parents like, oh, Johnny's not doing well at the plate. Yeah, but it's a pandemic and we're playing baseball and we're playing softball. Enjoy the process. I guarantee you, you'll come out better anyway, okay? If you're putting in the work and you're reaching out to the right people and you're doing all the best, you know, doing the best that you can, let the process flow, okay? Let the stats just take over. I can't control hits. 
And that's something I didn't I learned late in my career. I could control hitting the ball hard on a great pitch. Control the controllables, enjoy your teammates, be the best teammate. Try to be the best teammate possible. Okay? Obviously work hard physically, mentally, but try to be the best teammate you could be. I guarantee you won't regret it. So enjoy the process, be a great teammate, be a leader. Um, don't get so soaked up in the statistics. If you let the flow happen, that should be a hashtag, your stats are gonna come. If you put in the work, your stats are gonna go there. They're gonna get there, okay? I hope this video helps you. I hope I inspired you. If I inspired one person, I did my job. So hope that tip helps you.